So at the moment, anyone can access any part of application and do whatever they want. So a user doesn't even have to be logged in at the moment and you can edit, create and delete users. And then any user with any role can also do whatever they like. So in this video, we're going to start putting the foundations in of checking users and then granting them or denying them access to certain parts of our application. And we're mainly going to be using a feature in Laravel called gates to achieve this. So the first thing I'm actually going to do before we do anything with gates is just change this layout a bit. And the reason for this is, is because I want this top bar with the login and register to show for all users, even if somebody's not logged in. So they can access the login and register links, obviously. But then these menu items here, I only want to show them if a user's logged in. And then further down the line, I'll probably want to close off this users tab for, say, admins only. So what I want to do is separate these out onto two different lines. So let's do that first. So over in our main.blade.php file, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this entire navbar. So we have two copies of it. And then in this second one, I'm going to remove the logo. I'm going to keep the home and users links. And then I'm also going to get rid of the login and register. So that'll just leave the link to home and users on that second bar. And then obviously in this first menu, we don't want to be showing them links, the home link and the users link. We want to get rid of those. And then finally, I also want to get rid of this, this div here and its closing tag. So the login and register still sits on the right side of the screen. Now let's take a look at this in the browser. And you can see now we have our two separate menu bars. We've got our links to the application here and we have our logo and our login and register links on the top bar. So we need to change the style of this a bit now because obviously we put a margin bottom on the menu and also a drop shadow. So we just want to change this round a bit. So over in our app.scss file and make sure you still got your npm running in the background. So npm run watch. So it was going to watch for any changes. So I'm just going to create a new class here and I'm going to call this sub hyphen nav. And this is going to be for the second nav bar. Now I'm going to give this a background color of white. So we can just type that in. It's six S for white. And I'm going to take the box shadow and the margin bottom off the top nav bar. So I'm just going to cut these out and then I'm going to paste them in to the sub navigation. And finally, because we're still going to be using the navbar class on the second one, so we inherit all the original stylings from the navbar, we need to set a link color because currently it's set as white. And obviously that's not going to show very well on a white background. So just here in the sub nav, let's say all of our links inside the sub nav, we want them to have a color. We want the color to be our primary color that we set up in one of the first videos. Now we're just going to save on this and it's going to build. And now we just need to apply this sub nav class to our second menu over in main.blade.php. So we're going to come down to our second navigation bar. And after nav bar here, we're just going to add our new class sub hyphen nav. Then we're just saving on that. And then let's look at this in our browser. Let's give this a refresh now. You can see there we go. That looks much better. This is exactly what I wanted. So I've now got two menu bars. And I can start controlling this menu bar so only logged in users can see it. And to do this, we're going to be using gates. Now, there are already ways built into Laravel to check for a logged in user. And you can do that on the auth facade, for example. And there's a few other places that you can check it. But we're going to create our own gate from scratch for this because it's quite a simple example to get your head around gates. And this will give you a good idea of how the gates actually work in before we go on to the more complex examples with checking our roles. So we want to open up our auth service provider and that is under app providers and it's a file called auth service provider. And you can see at the top of the file here, it's already bringing in the illuminate support facades gate. So we can now use that facade to start building up our gates. So if we just scroll down to our boot method after here, and now we can just call that gate facade and we want to define a new gate. So we can call define and then we can give this gate a name. Now you can call this whatever you like. It's just something that's going to be easy for you to remember because these gates, we can use them anywhere in our application. We can use them in our views and we can also use them in our controllers 
or our middleware, literally anywhere in the application, you can use this gate. So you can control entire parts of your application and the code is only ever in one place. So for example, this gate, we're probably not gonna change it, but maybe further down the line, you're gonna create a gate to allow access to a certain part of the website. And then maybe further down the line, you may wanna change that to add another user group in to access that. You don't only have to change it in this one place in the auth service provider, and then that'll cascade down through all your views, all your controllers, and everywhere else that you call the gate. So it's a really powerful feature. So I'm just gonna call this one logged hyphen in and then as a second parameter this takes in a closure and i'm going to pass in the user and then inside of this controller i'm simply just going to return back the user so what this does now is if there is a user it's going to return them if there isn't a logged in user it's actually just going to return null so the gate is going to fail if you check against it so let me just show you an example of this so over in the user controller and I'm going to come down to just the index page for now. So now we want to check if there is a logged in user using that gate. So we can say if, and then we can call gate. Now remember, if the ID hasn't pulled this in automatically for you, make sure at the top that you call use illuminate support facade gate. And then on this gate, there's a method called denies. And what this does is it checks whether the gate is returning a null or a false. And if it is, that means it's true. So it's saying, does this gate deny? And in our case, if there's no logged in user, it's gonna equate to true. So that if will be triggered. So we can say, call our logged in gate that we've just created. And if this does equate to true, then let's just die and dump and say, no access allowed. Obviously this is just an example. You wouldn't really die and dump. You'd probably redirect to something. So now let's just try this in the browser. So we're already on our index users page in the admin panel. And as you can see here, we've got no logged in user because it's currently showing the login link. Now let's try and refresh on this page. You can see there now we get our die and dump. So it's gone to our gate and it's saying, does this deny? So does this gate equate to returning a false or a null? And if it does, just die and dump out. And that's how you can check gates, whether it's going to be turning a true or false and then allow or deny access through. So if I just head over to the create page, you can see that still allows us through without a logged in user because we're only doing that check on the index page currently. So let's actually just try and log in now. So now we're logged in, let's try and go to our users page. And you can see now we do pass that gate check so it doesn't die and dump out and it allows us to carry on through the application. So the good thing about using these gates now, like I said previously, is we can use them anywhere. We can use them in our views. So let's now apply that to our sub navigation bar here. So over in our main.blade.php file, and you see our sub navigation here. So now what we wanna do is call a blade directive called can. So we can do at can, and then we wanna say, can the current logged in user pass the gate called logged in? And if they can display this out, if they can't, then don't display it out. And then at the end of it, we just do an end can. Now, everything inside of here will only display if the user passes the logged in gate that we just created. So let's see this in practice now. Let's just do a refresh here. And you can see now we've got a logged in user. This navigation bar does show. Now let's hit the log out here. And now the user's logged out, that navigation bar disappears. So only logged in users can see the home and the user's link. So let's log in now to get that menu bar back. And you can see now we're logged in, we have our sub navigation bar back. So just because we're hiding the UI element, that doesn't mean that it blocks access to the rest of the application still. So for example, if we go to our users create page here, we can access it as a logged in user. But if we just click the log out button, and then we go back to that users create page. So it's forward slash admin, forward slash users, forward slash create. We can still access that page, even though obviously our sub navigation isn't showing, the actual URLs are still accessible. So we can actually stop users accessing pages with a thing called middleware. And what middleware does is it runs before every request that you apply the middleware to. 
and then it can do a check so for example it can check whether a user's logged in now out of the box laravel does come with an authentication middleware so it'll already check whether a user's logged in or not so for now we're just going to be using that on this but in the next video when we get more complex and we start using i'm going to create our own custom middleware that will do a roles check for example so for now let's just use that built-in one while we've got it so over in our web.php file which is under roots we can see we have our admin roots here so i'm just going to apply a another method on here called middleware and then in here i'm going to apply the auth middleware now this is something that comes with laravel out the box so let's just actually take a look at this so if we come under app http and kernel.php if we just scroll down this file to our you can see these are the middleware we can apply to the roots out of the box with laravel and you can see we've got that can method here so we can use that also and we've also got access to this auth so let's just apply this auth middleware that comes out the box with laravel and then what this will do this will check whether the user is logged in or not and if they're not logged in it'll redirect them to the login page so let's just save on this now and then this will protect everything with inside of this root group and that's the power of applying groups to sets of roots so any other roots that we put in here now not only will they get the prefix and the name they'll also go through the auth check you don't have to keep remembering to apply this auth check to anything that you put in the admin roots group it's just going to do it automatically for you so let's go back over to our browser now let's try and hit refresh on this create user page now and as you can see that has redirected us back to the login page so now any root within that admin group has got to pass the minimum check of the authentication middleware so now only logged in users can access the admin panel pages so now in the next video let's expand upon this and let's create more custom gates the where we're going to check the roles of the users and then also create custom middleware that we can apply to our admin panel to make sure the users have a certain role within our application before we allow them through into the admin panel so if you like this video don't forget to hit the like button and also hit subscribe so you get future notifications also if you'd like to give me a tip or buy me a coffee i've got a link to my patreon down below any donations you can make are really appreciated I've also got a Twitter account, so I'll put the link to that in the description. So follow me along on Twitter, as I always post updates on there of the upcoming videos and when they're going to be released.